In this video, I'll be touching on when do you use power equals to i squared r or power equals to v squared over r for your explanation instead of the usual power equals to iv. And I'll be using a pure physics 2017 paper 2, question 11 or to go through this. Now for part A, it's very straightforward. They ask you to basically state Ohm's law. And you know that for Ohm's law, what you need to recall is I directly proportional to your V. Of course, you write in full, the current passing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across it, provided physical properties like temperature remains constant. All right, so that is very straightforward. Next, you have a heating circuit of a hairdryer containing two heating elements, H1 and H2, and they are connected in parallel. And the power supply is a 230 volt supply. And it is given that for H1, the resistance is 240 ohms. So before you start solving, you should know that the, because H1, H2 are connected in parallel, both will be 230 volt. The V potential difference will be the same. And for the main current, when it comes to here, it will split into two branches. And depending on which one has a higher resistance, it will have lower current. Let's go through the part A. All right, part one, calculate the current in H1 after this element has been switched on. So that means to say the switch is closed here, so it's very straightforward. I'll be using V equals to IR, I equals to V over R, which is 230 divided by the resistance 240 ohms, and you'll get 0 0.958 ampere, and we can round off to 2 sig fig 0 0.96 ampere. So, but in general, uh, because all these values here, you can be considered two or three sig fig. So you can leave the answer in two sig fig or three sig fig. It should be fine. And the next part here, okay, uh, when both the elements are switched on, that means to say both are switched on here, H1 and H2, the total resistance, the total effective resistance is one quarter that of the H1 alone. Okay, so. If that's the case, let's find the total effective resistance, which is one quarter of H1 to 40 ohms. So you will have 60 ohms. Next is the usual. To find total effective resistance, you will take one over the resistance of H1 plus one over resistance of H2. Okay, finding because they are connected in parallel. So 1 over 60 equals to 1 over 240 plus 1 over resistance of H2. And this is just simple math. You can work it out. H2 equals to 1 over 80. So therefore, your resistance of H2 will be 80 ohms. All right. So you can, that's how you solve this part. Okay, let's go to the next part, which is the purpose of the video here. Now, if you are you have given two circuit, okay, where the R1 and R2 are connected in series versus the same resistor R1 and R2 connected in parallel. So, but of course, the basic you must know the current flowing through this circuit here, 11.3, will be the same because in the series circuit, current is the same. And the V1 plus the V2 add together is your EMF. These are basic that you know you must know. And for 11.4 is a parallel circuit, you know that your V1 and your V2, they are the same, okay, which is happens to be 230 volt. And the current IA plus your IB, that will be equals to your main current, okay. So let's put here, this is your I and main current. And so for this case, V1 plus V2, that will be your 230 volt, and the current is constant. So with this basic concept that you have, okay, let's continue. There are no other resistance in either circuit, so the resistance of R1 is larger than the resistance of R2. So that's important. So resistance of R1 is greater than R2. That means to say you will know that the current IA, okay, definitely will be lower than the current in IB, okay? Next comes the 
explanation is uh, you're given that without doing any calculation okay explain why in the circuit shown in figure 11.3 the power output of r1 is larger than the power of r2 so for this uh, in general when you think about power most students will think that power equals to iv but the problem is you know that current is constant but you do not know your v some students may think that i can use v equals to ir as current is constant so if my r1 is bigger my v1 will be greater but if that's the case there will be it's like a two-step kind of explanation and it's not so straightforward so a better way is to use power equals to i squared r that you have learned so to answer part one okay let's tell the marker explain to a marker that you understand r1 and r2 they are connected in series Therefore, the current flowing through both will be constant. Then using power equals to I squared R, always state the formula and the relationship where since I is constant, so what you have is power is directly proportional to your R. Of course, I'm writing in short form, so you have to write in full to explain to the marker. Next, we're going to tap on what is given in the question that R1 is larger than R2. So you just say that since given that R1 is greater than R2, therefore the power of 1 is greater than power of 2. That's how you conclude. So you can see that this way of explanation using this relationship is actually much more clearer and more direct. Another thing that I want to highlight is sometimes the question may ask you about the energy. So why the energy of your one is greater than the energy of the resistance R2. So if that's the case, the, you can still just make use of this because the relationship is actually energy equals to power times time. In other words, power equals to I squared RT and you can assume per unit time, that means one second. So basically you can just focus on power will do even though they ask for energy, it's the same. Now for Part 2 okay, is referring to 11.4 uh, where R1 and R2 are connected in parallel and still R1 is greater than R2 that's given in the question. So, so for here, they want you to explain why is it that the power of R1, okay, power of 1 is now smaller than the power of R2. So once again, we state that since R1 and R2 are in parallel, connected in parallel, so the V1 is equal to the V2. That means to say your V is constant for both R1 and R2. So state the relationship. I'm using power equals to V squared over R where V is constant Therefore, your power is inversely proportional to R. So you write that out in full. Power is inversely proportional to R. So once you state that, okay, then likewise make use of what's given in the question since R1 is greater than R2. Therefore, the power of 1 will be less than the power of 2 since it's an inverse proportion. That means when 1 increases, the other one will decrease. So for the last part, they say that for the parallel circuit 11.4, so R1 now is replaced with another resistor R3 and R3 is greater than the resistor of R1, much greater. So they ask you to complete what will any change to I a and your IB all right now you know that it's true even though if I change it to my R3 all right R3 and R2 they are still parallel and if they are parallel no matter what the potential difference will be the same all right so in other words this R2 and the current will remain the same because it's independent remember when things are connected in parallel when one is spoiled or the other one is on or off it this branch will not be affected okay it can still function as per normal so since R3 is much greater that means to say the current in IA will be much lower 
and i b will be constant all right so let's quickly just fill up so this one will decrease and this will remains constant so that's how you solve this question but like i said the purpose of this video is more on using your power equals to i square r and power equals to v square over r okay when to use this two for to help in your explanation so i hope this video give you a general idea so when you're given this kind of question you will be using this to help you all right thank you